What's up, everyone? It's Denise Salcedo. Welcome back to the channel. Ooh, we're here with Donovan Dijak. I don't know what that ooh was. I was just too excited. It's a, it's a very excited <laughs> ooh. I, 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 uh, I appreciate it. I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you for having me. No, dude, I'm really excited. I've been wanting to chat with you for a while. And when I saw that you were going to be taking an indie booking here uh, in Chino, I thought, oh, my God. I was like, this is a perfect time to get Donovan uh, in person to do this interview because uh, I'm sure you've seen on social media. I'm a huge fan of what you were doing and I was uh you know before we get into all of the releases and stuff I was bummed to see you leave WWE so I knew I wanted to get the chance to talk to you in person well it's here we are let's do it let's talk <laughs> <laughs> all right so first and foremost I want to shout out Donovan guys because how long was your flight right now oh boy all toll um I think we took off at maybe 5 a.m. Eastern, which would have been, I guess, 2 a.m. here. So I think about 10 hours of flight time total. I had a connection through Charlotte. I live in New England. So, so yeah, a little uh, adventurous route to get here, but but we did it. We did yeah, it. I was about to say 10 hours. You come here, you land. Immediately, you're doing this interview. Right after this, you're taking a one-hour commute. Al almost immediately. I did stop at an out Burger first. I was like, this for counts, the, the, the quickest, I, I was I was Google Mapsing to see if there was an In-N-Out burger, and there happens to be one, like, right there. Yes. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, absolutely have 10 minutes to spare to uh, to grab myself a 3x3, uh, three three, and that's exactly what I did, and it was delicious. I scarfed it down in, like, 14 seconds, so Hey, that's what you do when you're in California, right? You get yourself <laughs> some In-N-Out. <laughs> I had to I, – I, uh, I traded places with, uh, with Shane Haste. He's – He's in Lowell, Massachusetts, which is 20 minutes from my house for New Japan, and I we crossed each other in the air because he lives in Los <laughs> Angeles. So, so yeah, he taunted me with Dunkin' Donuts, and I taunted him with In-N-Out Burger, and that's that's our relationship. I love that, man. Yeah. But but Stop, that's the yeah. thing, though. I'm trying to get at the hustle, Donovan, because yeah. literally, okay, you took you took an In-N-Out break. It's harmless. You come here, you yeah. did this interview, <laughs> and then you're taking a one-hour commute to mm -hmm. Chino, doing a meet and greet, being part of the show, and then after that, I'm assuming you're going to get a little bit of rest, maybe, and then travel again. Yeah, thankfully, a little bit of rest. So, originally... I will hear some behind the scenes for you. Originally, I was scheduled for the big event New York, which is a, a Comic-Con sort of thing in, in New York, obviously. But it starts at the infrequent time of 10 a.m. So my original plan when I came here, and the promoter um, has been uh, tremendously accommodating. My original plan when I came here was to catch a red eye, which is a wonderful West Coast flight that goes to the East Coast. And then you, lo you just lose the night. Uh, to get to New York City at like 7 a.m. or whatever, get no sleep whatsoever, and to show up to that event uh, on time. Now, since uh, my new home promotion, MLW, has taken over and I have those dates, that replaced the big event New York date uh, with a Chicago date. So I do get to sleep for a bit tomorrow before I catch my flight to Chicago tomorrow. So that's the, the twists and turns of uh, booking Donovan Dijak in 2024. That's the hustle, though, yeah. right? Like, that's the pro wrestling hustle. And yes. so many people, uh, you know, we talk about this all the time when it comes to, uh, you know, the independence and really just going out there and traveling all over the freaking world. And already you were doing that previously. But well, what has sorta, it been I mean, like? It's, 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 it's funny because so many people – assume that my schedule has lightened because I'm no longer no, at WWE. it's worse, right? The, the exact opposite. The exact opposite. Because there's a decent amount of travel in WWE, but it's very repetitious, especially for me, because I wasn't on a lot of house shows or live events, as they call them, especially when I was on the Raw brand. So for me, it was just travel uh, Sunday night, TV Monday, and then back home Tuesday. And that was my schedule forever, you know, for a long time. It was just, and it was these, you know, relatively local dates. WWE goes all over the United States, but it's mostly central Midwest, East coast sort of, they don't come out to the West coast too, too often. So, so most of the flights were just easy show up to the arena, do main event or whatever, and then, and then come back, come back home. And, and I would have almost the whole weekend with my children and, and things like that. So so now it's changed dramatically. Now I'm all over the place. I've had weekends where I go to the west coast of Canada and then I'm back to the to New England and then I go to London the next day and then I'm in Germany. You know, I'm 
completely all over the place and every weekend is a, a brand new adventure so so yeah i'm super busy right now which is not a bad thing it's a it's a it's a good thing but you know i'm a little tired little <laughs> i don't blame you i don't i don't mind a, a weekend off with my children every every so often which i do get this sunday we're gonna go my son is a huge he's seven years old he's a huge um he loves to investigate and learn about the titanic so we're gonna go to a titanic artifact exhibit in boston i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna get home in time so my whole family can travel to boston and, and go to that on sunday so i'm super excited about that because i usually don't get a weekend day or yeah weekend day home with my kids so i'm super excited i love that i love how you just never know what your kids are going to get obsessed yeah. with and you're <laughs> I, I was not i thought you were going to say something about legos or some sort oh, of video Lego. oh my god <laughs> fun story he loves legos so much he's building the titanic Aww. out of legos He's this kid's brilliant. He's <laughs> the the box right on the box. It says eighteen plus only, and he was like, "Absolutely not! I love the Titanic." He saved up his own money. That's a six hundred dollar Lego set. My son Connor saved up all of his money, and and just to just to buy that, he bought the Titanic set. When I tell you, I, I'm this is not an exaggeration. He is doing this significantly faster than I would be able to do it. I I <laughs> was not a good builder. I'm not good with Legos. I have big hands. That it's, I literally just sit there and he's he's putting them all together and I'm just like trying to read the instruction book and figure <laughs> out which pieces to get out of the bag for him. And he's like calling for more pieces. He's like, hurry up, dad. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm not, you, you're the expert. Like you need to tell me what to do. But yeah, it's 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 a blast. It's a whirlwind. Yeah, he's he's into a lot of different things. Reading, he's super good at reading right now. He's he's uh, we just had a pair, <laughs> this is going so off course. Yeah, but I love what, this. once you get me started on my children, <laughs> I, I can't talk enough. Uh, we just had a meeting with his teacher. He's reading above a first grade level, which is he's in first grade right now. So so he's doing super well. I'm I'm so proud of my son and my daughter. They're they're both just the the light of my life. Well, I'm so happy to hear that because they are our future. The kids are our future. Sure. So when I hear that they're doing like great stuff like that, I'm like, yes, the future is in good hands. Thank goodness. When we're old, we'll have some somebody to take care of us. But, uh, so Donovan, you know, talking about that though, uh, your schedule, it is more hectic. You get certain sporadic weeks here and there uh, where you do get to take time off like that. But now that you're out there and you're back in the Indies, what has that experience been like on top of the scheduling? Like what else has changed for you? Um, I get a lot more freedom, which is just wonderful for me. I, my, my, my brain and my motor never stop turning. So, so for me, anytime someone just gives me sort of a, an open playbook and says, kind of, here's, here's, here's where you're going to be and just do whatever you want. That's like music to my ears. I, I don't even need a lot of time right tonight. Like I, I used to be so, um, what's the phrase i used to be so detail oriented especially in terms of my matches and my promos and stuff like that in terms of it's because with with the, the 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 wwe system which is where i was for the majority of my career now uh seven years um you, you would have to go in with such a game plan like such a because it would get whittled away right you know you'd go you'd come in with all these ideas and they'd be like oh you can't do this and you can't do this and you don't have that much time and, and th this isn't anything against them i'm not saying this negatively i'm just saying that's the way that television works you know you you, you only get x amount of time that, that they don't decide that like in usa network decides that you know so it's so it's just there's a ton of stuff that gets just gets pulled away you can't do that move that's in this segment you know things like that so I would go in with such this like detailed plan with like backup plans and stuff. And now it's, I go in with nothing and my, my brain, I just have like, I can do whatever I want. You know, I, I just have this immense creative freedom to, to say what I want and do what I want and wrestle how I want, however long I want, you know, most of the time within constraints, but it's just that, that is such music to my ears because I'm, I have, I have such a, uh, a, a, a an overflow of, of ideas when it comes to anything. Cause my brain, like I mentioned before, my brain just constantly turning about professional wrestling and, and everything related to it. So, so yeah, I, I, I almost need to not plan in advance. Cause if I do think about things in advance, then I'll just, I'll inundate myself with, with, uh, overthinking and over information. I can't have that. I, I need to just have the, the structure of, of what's happening in the moment, but I, I, I do love the freedom of it. 
Well, yeah, I was going to say, you have, when you're thinking about everything you have to do and all the bookings that you have to take, maybe thinking about it and planning like way in advance could be maybe a little bit overwhelming. So you kind of got to take it day by day. And that frees your mind up, like you said, to think about these ideas and run with them and, you know, do these, uh, you know, all of these random, because uh, in the Indies, it's super random, right? Your opponents are random. The promoters you're working for could be random. The crowds, the cities, you never know what to expect all the time. So it does open you up to kind of, you know, the world is your oyster. Anything can happen. Yeah, it's re it's really case by case. You know, people, students especially, I'm a, a trainer at the school that I trained at, the New England Pro Wrestling Academy in uh, North Andover, Massachusetts. And the, 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 the students there, they ask me, because students, they crave structure. You know, oh, if you were in this situation, what would you do? If you were here, what would you do? You know, what what should I do in this and this and this and this? And it's it's funny because the only answer you can ever give them about most of this is like it's case by case. You got to give me the details. You know, where where are you? What are you doing? You know, what's the what 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 have you been given? Does the crowd know you? Things like that. I'm talking just in a pro wrestling structure landscape, but it goes for anything. You know, it goes for whether I'm going to get a rental car this weekend, you know, how I'm going to fly back home, you know, what, what kind of flight am I, am I going to fly into Logan? Am I going to fly into Manchester? Am I going to, you know, there's just Is a Is there going to be an in and out? Is there going to be? <laughs> Usually it's Taco Bell. Usually yes. I land and I search Taco Bell and then I find my route to the venue or the hotel or whatever. And I find the Taco Bell on the way. In California, it becomes an out burger. So uh, that's a bit of my structure and the, the way that I go about things. But yeah, it's it's all case by case basis. You know, you, opponent, you know, sometimes you find out who you're wrestling that day. Sometimes you find out, you know, that sometimes it changes that many. You know, there's just so much. Uh, it's very volatile, which is fun. You know, it's exciting because if you just uh, submit to it and, and allow yourself to not worry about it it becomes that much more fun because you have to take everything as it comes which is which is awesome yeah i think that is awesome because again it kind of keeps life exciting you never know what you're going to see when you're in london you never know what you're going to see when yeah. you're in california <laughs> and i feel like that keeps life exciting you know it's worth living uh donovan so i do want to go ahead and touch on what i had mentioned at the top of this interview was that I was freaking bummed to see you go from WWE. Uh, now, of course, I want to get your feelings on that because I'm like, damn, if I felt this and I'm, you know, a viewer and this is your life and your career, how did you feel? Um, overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, for sure. Uh, there was, you know, a, a lot of disappointment, obviously, because I, I didn't see it coming. Um, excitement, too, though. You know, th th there, there was a lot of situations that I had almost um, – written off in a sense like like i i dreamt about wrestling uh one of my best friends in the industry anthony green again and i just thought that might never happen again you know and then suddenly overnight that became a very viable option now i've done it and it was a blast you know we had one of the best matches um in my career so you know it's and that's free on youtube if you want to watch it beyond wrestling youtube um so it's just <clears throat> uh, you know obviously <laughs> I'm not going to pretend this was a, a, a positive experience like, oh, one door closes and other opens. Yes, there was positive parts of it, but the overwhelming feeling was like fear and, <laughs> you know, scare. You know, I, I, I was I was thinking about it the other day, actually, because I picked up I picked it. This is a story I've never told anyone. I was picking up my son from the after school program. Um, and when I pick him up, he, he sees me coming obviously from a mile away and he, he, he has his little friend too. And they both see me coming and they both run off into the woods to hide from me. And I have to chase it. It's this huge, huge playground field that I, and I just sprint around and the, you know, the teachers look at me like I'm a maniac, but my son loves it. So I don't care. Um, but on, right next to that field is a basketball court. And that basketball court is where I was, um, I was helping. I was chaperoning. My son had like a, like a field day or whatever. And I was, I was with my wife and we were manning the, uh, the, the court over there for one of the games. It was one of the stations. And that's, that's, I was standing there and I had to take a pause and, and take a phone call. And it was from, uh, Mojo, who was my, my rep, uh, with the Paragon talent group. And that was the phone call where he told me the WWE told him that they wouldn't be renewing my contract. And so my, you know, I'm what's supposed to be this super fun day with my son and my wife. My wife's looking at me and I'm on the phone. She can see the color, you know, draining from my face because th th this is the last thing I expected to hear. You know, I, more like a month removed from stand and deliver where everybody gave me just this this these wonderful uh, awesome three way. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. They. 
they, they, they told me that it was, it was wonderful and thank you. And, and we're excited to have you on the main roster. You know, I was told all of these things and uh, obviously something happened, probably business wise, you know, I, I, I'm not taking any of that personally because it's a business and it's, you know, there's, there's money and, and people are making decisions based off money. So I totally get that. So I don't, I don't hold anyone specifically accountable for that. I'm sure it was just a, a business decision in whatever aspect uh, they determined that there was money-making avenues in a different direction. I, I, I get it. I get business. But for me personally, you know, that, that's a huge hit to me and my future and my family and how am I going to provide and things like that. Um, so, yeah, it wasn't all like, you know, oh, great. <laughs> what, a, what a wonderful opportunity. Um, <laughs> you know, it was it was terrifying. It was it was scary. Uh, that that day was incredibly stressful for both me and my wife. The following weeks were as well. Um, just organizing things, sorting things. Where can we cut back? Where can we save, you know, expenses, things like that? Um, you know, but at the same time, there were those positive aspects. And I was trying to focus on those. And I was trying to, you know, say that this is an opportunity. There's there's things I can do now that I couldn't do before, you know, I, where can I open up new revenue streams? Where can I, you know, make, make, uh, new waves for myself, things like that. So, so that's, that's sort of, you know, the mixed bag of, of, uh, how I was feeling and, and what I was kind of reacting to and preparing for and, and things like that. Does that kind of answer your question? No, it definitely does. And it's one of those things, of course, it's always unfortunate. And it's like, I know that, you know, when you are in WWE, you know, you're famous and all of this, but at the end of the day, like losing a job it's still losing a job whether you are in wwe or you're in an office job or whatever the case is your life completely changes yeah frankly frankly it's kind of on me in hindsight it's on me because i didn't see it as a realistic possibility even though i should have and i'll i'll put this warning out for you know all of my colleagues and friends in, in wwe those of which i haven't spoken to personally don't assume right if you're if your contract is up on x date plan for that right don't don't assume oh i'm gonna get renewed uh, you know they they tell me all these whatever you know it's it, like prepare for worst case scenario and then if best case scenario happens great <laughs> right i didn't i did not i just assumed that oh i'm, I'm doing so well I'll, I'll be in the best case scenario that was a poor assumption on my part. I should have planned better because I knew the date it was up and it was getting closer and closer. And obviously there was anxiety growing, but uh, I didn't, I didn't plan for it. I just hoped it wouldn't happen. And that's not the case. So not just for WWE wrestlers, any wrestler, any person, any human being, if you know that there's a possibility of something, and even if you have a regular job, if you have a regular job and you're like, Oh, I'll never be fired from this job. Have a plan for if you suddenly get fired from that job because it can happen you know even if you think it can't it can and that's scary and it, but if you have a plan in place now you're okay right because you've planned for the worst but you know you hope and try and obviously you know succeed and and hope for the best but uh yeah it's 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 partially on me so i take i take responsibility for my lack of planning and i should have done a better job but now we're back on track so so i'm, I'm in a much better place right now but the interesting part of that though is and you can correct me if i'm wrong but i felt like that was probably some of the best work that you were doing i mean you mentioned that stand and deliver match you mentioned i yeah. loved the feud <laughs> that you had with joe gacy yeah, that was one of my favorite things that joe gacy did on nxt that was one of my favorite things i saw uh and on top of that you're i know this is science somewhat you know not necessarily a direct reason but you were also killing it on social media which i know some people are like wait what does that have to do with anything it has a lot to do with a lot of things social media is very important so you're killing it on tv you're getting over you're connecting with people on social media you're kind of checking all of these boxes here you're making nxt work for you and then you get drafted and everybody's like oh shit look at the reward it's paying off and i'm sure that's probably what you thought i don't know but i know that's what i thought seeing that i thought you that because you did such a good job in nxt that that's why hey you're being drafted yeah um and i'm gonna watch what i say here <laughs> because I've, I've 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 said these these things before and they always get clipped and they always get aggregated and i get eaten alive online um that's that was the beginning of when i started when i started hoping for the best but planning for the worst that that moment was was the was the first time 
when I started hoping for the best, but planning for the worst. Cause that was the first time that time when I, I'm referring to the night I was drafted because uh, exclusively for no other reason other than because I wasn't drafted on TV. That to me became an, a, a small, and no, it wasn't the end of the world, right? I wasn't like horrified or anything. But it was a red flag. It, it, it was a bit of a flag, yeah, because I said, I said, hmm, <laughs> there's, there's the possibility that they don't see me the, a, a, as, a, as a financial asset in the way that I hoped they did. Um, which up until that moment, I hadn't felt that way. Um, that was the first moment where I was like, maybe I should have planned better for, <laughs> for what's after this. And I, it turned out I was right. I, I should have planned better because uh, they didn't see me as, as the, the financial asset that I, I, I was hoping that they might. And again, I don't blame them for that. And it's, it's a business and it's, there's lots of things in, in WWE specifically, but in pro wrestling outside of wrestling in the ring and promos in the ring. You know, there's, there's different things that make money. There's tons of ways to draw money in professional wrestling, and only a small chunk of that is uh, matches in the ring and and uh, 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 promos on the microphone and and the connection with the crowd and stuff like that. People people think because it's you know it's WWE, it's World Wrestling Entertainment that that's the forefront. It it really isn't. It it, it storytelling is, and there's a million ways to tell a story and. Uh, a, a fight, a simulated fight is only a small way to tell a story. There's much broader ways to tell a story, whether it's relationships or family members or things like that. So there's a ton of boxes that you can check off. And I just by nature of who you are, sometimes you don't check a lot of those boxes and that's okay. That's, that's part of a business. That's part of drawing money. And I, I get that part of it. Um, but yeah, so, so what, what was, you know, a, 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 an exciting moment because there was tons of excitement around that. And they, uh, somebody did me a huge favor and put all that stuff on YouTube and it was, it was, it was good for me and it was a good social media thing and all that. Um, but yeah, there was, that was certainly the first moment of hesitancy where I was like, oh, I should, I should hope for the best, <laughs> but plan for the worst. Man. And that, that's like, of course, the unfortunate part, because you think, oh, getting drafted to the main roster, like, yes, my hard work's paying off. This is going to happen. Yeah. But it, it kind of also, sucks, also you know? keep in mind that I'd been on raw for, of for course. a long time. So that, that played a big factor because, you know, my goal in going back to NXT was not to just, you know, tread water and, and then, jump back where I was, you know, I, I wanted to reinvent myself. I wanted a brand new character, a brand new, because I looked at it and I said, okay, there's, if I'm on the main roster, right. Cause I was, I was on raw for two, for two years and I'm on raw with, you know, Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar and just these massive, just shoot accolades, just these huge names. And I'm like, man, how do I fit into the picture with these guys? Um, Cause it's not going to be on Chris Dijak, you know, it's me, the human being, because like, that's not impressed. That's not as impressive as Bobby Lashley, the cage fighter and Brock Lesnar, the UFC champion. You know, it's I'm just a guy, you know, and I'm a decent sized guy, but not as decently sized. As uh, I was going to say, so. I, I, when you walked out of the elevator today and I saw you, I was like, holy shit, he's tall <laughs> as hell. <laughs> yeah, but my, my my point being, I needed to reinvent the character portion of it so so that you could plug me into to any storyline and say oh he's you know he's he's interrogating Brock Lesnar you know he's he's putting uh you know the, he's arresting this guy you know whatever whatever thing you wanted to to give to the character of of Dijak as we presented it in NXT you know it just had a lot of that sort of law enforcement kind of uh feel to it uh or less law enforcement more like investigator detective sort of thing that we were going for but i wanted it to be sort of a, a thing you could take and plug into raw and say oh now he's now we can use him in the main event scene now we can use him and and so um so yeah so i i had a sense of what that felt like because i'd been on raw for a long time and i i knew kind of what what it felt like when they had someone that they could plug into those positions and and how that presentation fit so when i started to get a sense of I'm back in the fold of raw and I know what that presentation feels like for other people. And that's not quite what I'm feeling right now for myself. That's when I'm like, uh, it, this, this feels more like my last stint on raw as opposed to a fresh start on raw, which is like, 
not a good sign with my <laughs> contract coming up because you know I, I i i know where i was on the card and it felt like i was in a in a similar spot and that was that was a da- turned out to be a dangerous place to, to to be at the time it seems like your instincts were very on point like everything that you kind of like had that feeling it and ended up being that's what it was which in a way i guess it's like it you know i know you said it was completely unexpected which it still is but there's always that inkling that you did have which is of course very unfortunate i do want to ask you about your nxt run because like you mentioned you went there to reinvent yourself and i can i can say like as a viewer I saw that and so many people saw that. I talked to people on social media on the chat that were like, hey, shit, Dijak's kind of killing it out here. Uh, how did you feel about, you know, the stuff that you were able to do on NXT? I was super happy with it. Super happy. It was a, it was a, they gave me the platform to reinvent myself. They being, you know, Shawn Michael. Well, I, I mean, and to a certain extent, Triple H and, and Bruce Pritchard, who ultimately sent me there right they they you know it was it was their choice to to put me on nxt um but in terms of the the way that i was presented on nxt that's that's sean michaels and and uh johnny russo so you credit to all of them you know w- without that opportunity i'm in a much different spot right now right because that that whole year I, I called it very uh publicly i called it the best year of my career and i i still feel that way um I, even right now, I still feel like I'm in the middle of, you know, the best run of my career because I'm I'm physically healthy, you know, knock on wood. Um, I'm, I'm still not as athletic as I was probably three or four years ago, but but close enough, <laughs> close enough in the ballpark where, you know, the 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 the, the things that I can control are, are still completely up to standard, you know, in terms of. Uh, footwork and violence and the the things that that you know I, I teach and and uh, sort of speak to me about professional wrestling uh, th- those are still completely on point um, quite frankly I can still do all the corkscrew moonsault stuff off the top I just I don't do it as much anymore I, I I'm was saving it for you know whatever biggest stage I can <laughs> I can find hey wait, everybody's got that bump card yeah right exactly <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm trying to limit it as I as I uh, move closer and closer to the age of 40 um but yeah the the NXT run you know I was given so many opportunities so many amazing matches so many more than the matches, though, was the storylines. I was so happy with the presentation of the of the story and the character and the stuff I got to do. Like you mentioned with Joe Gacy, where I had him in the in the the, the not it wasn't a cell. It was like a it was like a I put him in like a crazy person's room because I, I the story was he's an insane person. And I'm trying to like beat the crazy out of him or whatever, you know. But but just those interactions, it was so much fun. It it, it gave me the opportunity to really work on my my acting skills which I've been working tirelessly with with um my acting coach Howard Fine who's actually from here I, I wish I set up something to to visit him because we've only ever spoken online uh, he he obviously you know he's one of the top acting coaches in Hollywood um if not the top acting coach in Hollywood so so I I I I study religiously with him and I have been for for years now Um, so I was able to finally put a lot of that to, to, to use on television, you know, on shows that people are seeing and stuff. Um, and it was just so much fun. It had so much, so much depth. I mean, as much depth as a, you know, a pro wrestling (laughs) show can have, um, on a, in a, you know, a mid card storyline, but it still, it was, it was so fulfilling to do it. And then the matchups I had at the end and I was starting to get more, uh, in ring live mic promo time, which I love. I, I, I never felt like I got enough of that in WWE. So towards the end, especially I was getting a ton of it and I, I, I loved every second of it. Um, it was, it was just great. It was a great way I, again, I, I thought this was, you know, a, a, a catapult to the main roster. It turns out it was a catapult back to the Indies, which, you know, is still great. It's still great. You know, I'm still uh, reaping the benefits of it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm booked solid. You know, a, everything's going well. I'm, I'm featured as a, a, in, the, in the main event of most of these shows that I do most nights, wrestling for championships all the time. You know, I have a wonderful opportunity with MLW now. So, so it's, 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 it's going well. I'm super thankful that it happened. 
because had it not happened, I would have been in a much different spot, like I alluded to before. But but yeah, uh, just the the year itself and the matches and and some of the standout matches, especially with like Wes and Ilya, and then the triple threat they mentioned, then the match with Joe, and even the TV match with Joe with the with the cage and moon salting off the cage and all those memorable moments. I mean, all that stuff happened within like a calendar year. So so it's just it's it's been so much fun. It's been a wild ride, and uh, you know I, I'm not ready for it to end. So I'm I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep going above and beyond and outperforming and and seeing you know what what limits i can push and and all the all the things that i just love to do in the pro wrestling business what was it like working with Shawn michaels because uh you know i and i only ever hear great things about Shawn, and i only ever hear people say the same things that you kind of just said right now where he gave me a chance i spoke with baron corbin he echoed the same words i spoke with trevor lee cameron grimes echoed the same words um what was your experience like really good really good really positive um i just on a personal level i love working with with sean specifically when it comes to the in-ring wrestling uh because before i went before i was called up to to retribution and raw the first time he was actually he wasn't running NXT at the time. He was just a coach there. You know, I, I think he helped with creative in a, in a little bit, but mm-hmm. but he was a coach. But he was the top coach there, and I got to he he was my my coach for probably a year or so. So we got to do what we call skull sessions, which is just watching film and breaking it down and stuff. And all of that was so so helpful. Just easily uh, the top trainer I've ever worked with in terms of in ring knowledge and and. Um, and I can tell that he and I, d- despite being that, this is the fun part of it. Despite being totally different uh, styles, be, just by definition, he's going to have a different style than me because we're much different physically, um, and stylistically, and character-wise, and all that stuff. Because it all plays a role in the in the character presentation in the in ring. But he and I have such a, a similar mind when it comes to. Uh, designing matches and 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 how to elicit you know proper reactions that I would love more than anything else to just bounce things off of him and not even not even like moves and stuff like that but just moments out of it because he's such a he's such an artist when it comes to that part of professional wrestling because the move you know the the sequences and all that stuff that's you know it it varies from crowd to crowd and stuff like that but he was so good with the oh the camera's going to be tight on you and here's the story that we need to get across and here's how you can do it with your with your face and your body and things like that and we we would just bounce ideas just straight off each other what if i do this and he'd think about any what what i loved the most about him is that i would give him something and i wouldn't get what you get a lot of the time in the pro wrestling business, uh, whether it's from the you know the booker or the uh, or the other wrestler that you're working for, which is you can see the wheels turning on how they're going to try to say no and get their idea instead. He would never do that because any wrestler watching this knows what I'm talking about. They they pitch something to someone and then the other guy starts thinking about it, and you can tell that they're thinking about how to politely tell you no your idea sucks i want to do my own thing because that's just how we are as human beings we, we we all think that our stuff is the best um what i what i got from him and what i learned from him is it's always going to be better if you can take someone else's idea and adjust it to make it even better right not not change it and don't do it but he would always listen to what i said and take it and say how do I take what Dijak's saying and make it even better? He would do he would do my idea, but just either adjust it or fluff it or whatever and put his little spin on it. And I'd hear what he'd say back, and I'm like, man, that's so much better. <laughs> and from from getting that, that's I I want to be that guy. A- anyone who I've wrestled, 99.9% of the time when they pitch something to me, I'll stop and they'll they'll it's it becomes uncomfortable because I'll stop and I'll think and I'll close my eyes. And I start picturing it and Rolodexing through my head. Uh, for the, <laughs> the term Rolodex is a, is, is a funny term because I used it with a younger kid and they had no idea what I was talking oh, about. No. A Rolodex is an old thing. It's like where, where you keep your names in your cell phone now. But it's like we used to have a, a thing of names. So you you anyway, um, <laughs> Google it. Uh, so I would I'll, I'll sit there and I'll think of how can I 
how can I, yes, I want to do this idea, but I want to make it, what can I do to make it just a little bit more memorable? And, and to me, that's, that's the, the beauty of Shawn Michaels. That's, that's where he was always the most formidable asset to, to me and to everyone else around him. And that's why he's so, so tremendous and so valuable to the pro wrestling industry. And I mean, that's, that's the top reason, in my opinion. There's a hundred other reasons, but, but that was always just my favorite moments with Shawn. No, I love hearing you say that because it's those things where it's like, okay, I give him my idea. He didn't make me feel stupid for pitching this idea <laughs> never, never. and instead just enhanced it. And yes. I feel like that is – that's very important, right? Because a lot of Extremely. people could be like, well – I've done all of this. What you, what have you done? And they could kind of keep you down. And then you're kind of like, well, it's kind of true. What have I done compared to this person? So you want to make sure that your ideas are heard. And I feel like that is what has been working a lot for NXT. Uh, and you're seeing so many young people and uh, all, all these people get opportunities. Have you still been watching the show or has it been like a little difficult for you to watch WWE? Like, where are you at on that? I, I, I keep up with it. So for the first probably it's been, uh, I don't know, what was it, June, excuse me, um, June 28th or something. So June, July, August, September, October, November. So about five months, right? So or four and a half, five months. Uh, I'd say for the first month or two, I was still watching just because I was in such a, I'm, I'm a creature of habit, right? So for the longest, my whole, you know, my whole adult life, basically, I've just been watching every single program every single week just so religiously uh, because I, I loved it and I wanted to keep up with it. Um, so, f you know, for about a month or two after that, I, I was still just in my habit. I would, I'd watch Monday Night Raw, I'd watch NXT, I'd watch SmackDown just because that was my routine. And um, it started to get difficult. It started to get really difficult for me, you know, because – because before it was always it was always coming from a place of like oh how can I how can I contribute what would I do how do I pitch this where can I where can I fit into that and so my mind is still going to those places and that becomes a you know a dark place when it's like oh I I can't right I there, there's there's no one to pitch to anymore there's no one to, <laughs> I can't I can't contribute anymore so so it just became very difficult for me to to watch it in that sense so so on the one hand yeah i'm i'm, I'm friends with all these people and i want to watch them and i want to support them but it, it did become extremely difficult to me for me to just watch the the the, the show as it is because like i said my i can't turn my mind off it's always racing it's always a motor it's always going it's always generating new ideas and stuff like that and that just it it just becomes too difficult um so I, I don't watch the 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 product uh, or the WWE product anymore. Uh, I, I but I keep up with it just because I want to know like what my friends are doing and if they're having success. Um, if I if I think that someone is a new, um, I'll I'll give you a good example. What's what's the um, what's the what's Delta's new name on Zaria? Zaria. So um, so I saw all this. This hype surrounding her, and I was like, wow, that's a lot of hype for someone that most people probably haven't seen <laughs> wrestle. <laughs> and I think I think that it becomes this thing where people just get excited for because everyone else is getting excited, and there's this cool promo package, and it's like, oh, she's going to be great, and they've never seen her wrestle before. And I found myself in that boat. I'm like, oh, I've never seen her wrestle before, but my mind is immediately jumping to conclusions and stuff. So, so I'm like, why wouldn't I do my due, due diligence and go watch some matches? So I went on YouTube and I went, I watched the matches and I, like within five minutes I said, oh, this is, this is one of the, and pro wrestling subjective, right? So this is just my opinion. Um, but I, I've seen a ton of wrestling. I've watched tons and tons of matches and watching her and just the things that I like about pro wrestling, right? Cause everyone can like different things. You can like comedy, you can like whatever you can like technical ability. You can like facial expressions, whatever you like in terms of what I like about professional wrestling. She was immediately in my top 10 of currently active wrestlers, just in terms of what I like about professional wrestling. So, so that, that was exciting for me to discover that and to say, Oh, wow, this is great. And now I can, now I can keep up with that. And I can, I, and I posted about this. I said, you know, um, and I've been, I've been praising Fallon Henley for, for a very long time. Uh, so I was so happy to see her finally get some accolades. Um, and th that whole division is just doing incredibly well from what I can tell, because I consume a lot of this from social media again, because I, I can't, I, 
just can't <laughs> put myself in a position to to watch the the weekly show. But you know, I I do I do keep up with it um, as much as I can, and I do I do follow these these people in their career because I I am friends with a lot of them, and I do want them to succeed more than anything else. I mean that that's that's a, a huge huge important factor to me. So so yeah, that's that's kind of how I I keep up with it. I, no, I get it because in one part it's like yes it's hard but at the same time like I'm rooting for you guys but it is one of those things that I guess with time it'll just get easier I hope so yeah I hope so. yeah <laughs> no I think so I think it'll happen and then you're just gonna have an entirely new perspective on things or you know all of that sure. but uh question for you should I bring up retribution <laughs> do you feel like talking about retribution sure sure yeah let's talk <laughs> okay I was like let me let me let me ask let me see if you're in the mood to talk about retribution <laughs> so here's here's the thing a lot of people a lot of people assume that I'm like that I look back at retribution as this horrible miserable dark time I I don't look at it that way I I was there was there was difficult parts of it and that's the those are the parts of it that people want to gravitate towards because a lot of it involves Vince McMahon and there's just this shroud of controversy around him and all this darkness. And, and, um, so, so I get it. I get that, the, you know, the controversy generates interest. Um, but for the most part, it was really just me and my very close friends. I, I just talked about Shane. He was in retribution with me, Br Brennan, uh, the MXM, all those guys, Ali, I saw him the other day, you know, that these are all my really close friends. So, so yes, it's this difficult position where like, we're being told you have to wear this mask and you have to do this and your, your name is this. And it's like, Oh, um, <laughs> so I get that people gravitate towards that part. But for the most part, the day to day of it was like going to work with my friends and Hey, you have this huge pay raise and you're still working during the pandemic when, when nobody else is working, tons of people are getting fired. So we looked at that every day as like a super positive, like we're in the Thunderdome, which is like, yeah, it kind of stinks because you want to be in front of a live crowd. And I've never been in front of a live Monday Night Raw crowd, aside from a couple of little things with NXT right before that. Um, but the Thunderdome in its own right is like this. As I remember multiple times sitting in the Thunderdome and just kind of looking around and being like, this is an experience that will go down in history and 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 it'll 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 almost be become like a thing of legend because no one else is ever going to experience this again there were there were times and i've told this story before there were times where i would be sitting in the upper deck of the arena at the thunderdome just watching monday night raw and i'm the only person in this giant arena so they're doing monday night raw like for me and i'm just <laughs> sitting there watching it and th that wasn't lost on me in the moment i would sit there with my friends just watching monday night raw and i'm like this is the coolest thing ever this is the coolest thing ever like you literally can't pay there, there's no there's nobody in the world rich enough to pay to just sit in an arena by themselves and watch monday night raw it just doesn't exist and we're getting it and they're paying us to do it and i was like this is the coolest thing ever um <laughs> that's the real vip right there it, 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 in a the way v -V in, a, in a way it just it felt like the coolest thing and then we'd go down and wrestle and the wrestling was was unique because like we, we in the in the industry we call it crash to break, which is like go to a go, you do something and then it goes to commercial. We do that and then they'd be like, all right, we're we're dark and we just stop wrestling. There, there's a couple of clips online of of like of that leaked out or whatever of 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 that happening, but it would be so funny as we're doing it because you just kind of stop wrestling and just talk to the other person like standing out there and then it'd be like, all right, we're coming back live in 15 seconds. You grab a chin lock or whatever. It's, it was just the funniest experience, just the most unique thing in the world so yeah i i, I know that there's going to be a lot of you know dark portions to the retribution stuff and, and rightfully so but but yeah for us mostly on the day-to-day -day piece of it it was just a ton of fun and just a, a, a really interesting time and, and and we we wanted to succeed we wanted it to succeed so we would bounce ideas off each other and we're pitching stuff and it was, it was this whole process so yes it was difficult and it was um frustrating but at the same time there was a lot of fun aspects of it do you think it would have worked out differently at all if it wasn't during the pandemic yes um i don't know how but the, it's pro wrestling so there's the potential for anything you know it could have gotten over in like a silly ironic way which would have been interesting and we could have played around with that maybe it progresses into a comedy thing and then you know you and then it, it just you know it starts to to escalate that way into something that gets super over. You just never know. You never know how it's going to progress. 
uh, or maybe, you know, maybe the, the, just a, the crowd would react in a certain way that makes it much more serious. You know, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. I, I know that, I know that the initial presentation of us, like of the lights going out and the signs coming up and us storming through the crowd or whatever, that would have been significantly cooler with people, right? Just coming, just <laughs> coming into like the Thunderdome, like, oh, it's like they came through the screens. It's like nobody. <laughs> you only yeah. had commentary it, it, really right. to play it, with. It, yeah. it, doesn't, it doesn't fulfill that like sort of like rebel anarchist sort of like oh they're they're doing whatever they want sort of because you're like you're obviously there in the same place that everybody else is and there's no like security guards or anything so you're literally just coming from the same place that everybody else is you're just taking a longer route to get there (laughs) whereas if you're doing you know the shield thing where it's like they're coming through the crowd they're these mercenaries you know where are they where do they live where do they come from you know it just because it's a totally different presentation so so yeah i think it would have changed i think it would have got different uh sort of reactions but what a lot of people forget is that ultimately, especially at that time, it was just one guy's decision, right? And he could decide whatever he wanted. And a lot of the time he just did. It didn't matter how things were being perceived. It didn't matter how things were going. He just, he would just say, uh, I like it or I don't like it. And that was it. So, you know, it's, it's so funny. We spend so much time just predicting what this one guy would have thought about something, but that's the reality of what the business was for a long time. And in some senses, it's still that way. You know, that's, I mean, that's what booking is. It's just, it's just one person making decisions and it's it's hard for fans to accept that you know because myself included as a fan because like i want to feel like i'm influencing the product and i want to but ultimately at the end of the day somebody has to make the decision so it usually just boils down to like how they feel you know and that's that's what it is obviously working you know in the pandemic and like you there's so many different factors so many like the whole the whole am the whole ambiance is so different right what, did you have like any interesting or or how do, i don't explain this. did you have any interesting interactions with vince mcmahon like what was it like working with him and especially in that kind of a setting where it's maybe not moving as busy as it would uh when you have a live audience and then everybody's kind of has that extra rush right, right um i'll be honest most of my so my first couple of interactions with vince were before retribution um was even formed because there was this weird if people remember the the whole timeline was so odd but they were doing um they were doing raw out of the out of the performance center so there was like a makeshift sort of gorilla and he kind of had an office over in this other building that was right near there um but i was kind of called up but it was this weird middle ground where like no one's quite sure who's called up and people aren't even sure who the producer of of raw is and who the producer of smackdown is and it was there was a lot of shifting parts in that middle that summer of 2020 sort of time uh the show it's people don't remember this because it was so f- you almost get PT, ptsd watching it because it's like the silent, the silent era where it's just like, you can only hear like the mat and it's just, people try to forget it because it's just so difficult to think about. And it just reminds us, reminds all of us of, the, of this really dark time. Um, but yeah, there was a, there was a time there and then they started using like wrestlers as audience members, but I was kind of called up. So like sort of keep him off camera, but not really. And it was just this weird middle ground. So at one point I was just like, you know what? I can't get an answer from anyone. I'm just going to go talk to Vince McMahon and, and see what he says. Um, and that first meeting went awful. I like accidentally interrupted him and it was just, it was, it was a, it was a bad series of events. And I, I don't think I made a good first impression. Not that it probably would have mattered much. Cause like, again, you get, you get a pretty good sense of how someone feels about something in WWE pretty quickly. Right? Like if someone gets called up, usually it's like, Oh, they've got some vignettes and they've got some, that's, I got called up and it was like, I'm sitting in the crowd. <laughs> so it's like, uh, it's probably, I, I, I don't think they think very highly of me. Um, but you know, it, it can change, you know, it can, it can vary uh, over time. Um, so I went to talk to him, not a great first impression. I went to go talk to him again. I made the presentation cause then retribution started and I don't think they knew who they wanted to use for it. Um, but I went and I talked to him about that. And that second meeting went a lot better. Um, and he gave me like a, he gave me a little pep talk about professionalism, um, which is interesting. Um, you and think that, that was based off of the first interaction? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think he, I think he felt like I was unprofessional the first time, which quite frankly, I think I was trying to come off that way. Cause I just, I wanted to like kind of, 
become, show initiative. I wanted to show initiative, but I didn't. I didn't want it to be like a formal like guy in a suit. Like, hello, sorry, I work for you. No, I, I wanted it to be like a like a friendly relationship. Uh, so I guess not the correct approach for him. Um, but he watched my stuff. He watched my videos. Uh, obviously in some aspect, he liked part of it because he ended up using me and, and a couple of the names that I had, uh, written down. Um, but ultimately I think he wanted it to be his vision and, and that's kind of what you got on screen. And we, we just started trying to adjust as, as, as much as we could along the way. And, and, Really, that's sort of what the relationship ended up being most of the time was uh, I think it was mostly Ali because because he had the you know, he had been working with Vince for years at that point. So so he had more of a, a stance to go like talk to him one on one. But a lot of the time, especially after Retribution disbanded, you know, me, I would go and meet with him, especially with with uh, Mason Brennan. Um, we Because we were a tag team for a while and we would go and pitch stuff and, try. you know, it was it was, it was a lot of that. Remember when I talked about Sean and how he would listen to something and he would digest it and he would try to use what you said. So Vince was more of the opposite. <laughs> Vince was, I can imagine. You could, you could, you could, you could kind of see the, I think he's nicely trying to say no <laughs> sort of, sort of thing happening. And we'd, you'd, you'd leave and you'd be like, all right, I, that was very nice. He was very nice and positive And, and he said like, oh, sounds good. Um, but you, you'd kind of get the sense that, our idea probably isn't going to happen and it wouldn't most of the time. <laughs> You're like rethinking every word. Yeah, what no, was exactly. said, That's, the tone. Exactly. Did I read this too much? It's like exactly. overthinking. Like, yes. Oh my God, that must be like, you know, a That's whole lot. Exactly what it was. You would spend the next week thinking about every word. What word did he say? How did he say that? What did he mean by that? And really it was just like, grasping at straws like i hope he heard one thing i said like that's really just kind of how it felt which you know it's 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 part of it it's part yeah. of it now i haven't had the chance to uh i've i've only interviewed mustafa ali one time but it was several years ago but based off of that interaction and just like all the stories that i hear about him he seems like one of the nicest people out there i was gonna say am i, am I wrong am i wrong I was like, no, he does a, seem he's, like it he's a great person he's he's a good friend um, I love being on shows with him. I love being around him. I got to wrestle him uh, a couple of weeks ago in uh, Winnipeg, maybe. Uh, super fun. So, so always fun to get in the ring with him. He's so, so fun to work. I, I don't want to use the word easy. People use easy all the time. I think easy is almost like a, it's almost like a detrimental thing. Like if someone said I'm easy to work with, I'd be like, oh. You don't, don't want, want to be a pushover. Yeah. I, no, not, not, not even a pushover. It just makes it seem like. Like we're like not trying, you know. Oh, it was easy. We're not oh, trying. You know, like I see. Uh, he he gives it a thousand percent, and he's bouncing ideas, and we're working off each other. So so it's not easy in any sense of the word. It's but it's just it's 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 fun. You look forward to it. It's not it's not taxing in any way. Um, but more than that, he's just a great person. Just a just a great human being. Always uh, puts his name on the line, sticks his neck out. He was he was just he was so giving and trying to get all of us into a better position and i'm forever thankful to him yeah i was gonna say it's one thing to have to go out there in this type of environment and vouch for yourself yeah. now on top of that you're trying to vouch for other people that definitely does take a lot so that's really awesome donovan we're nearing the end of our interview here before we get into our game portion i do want to ask you uh you know about you know you're obviously doing stuff with mlw you're yes. in the indies what's the goal it's short term long term what do you want to make sure that you accomplish um, <clears throat> my mindset is never going to change. Um, I, I can't, I couldn't change it if I wanted to, you know, I, I work shows in front of, I've, I've, I've worked a show, uh, it, that was, um, it was for charity, but it was, it was like an unadvertised, it was, it was advertised, but, um, it wasn't a wrestling event. It was just a, it was just an event that wrestling happened to be at. So like most people weren't there to see wrestling. Um, and I was on that show and it was outside. It's almost like this sort of, sort of like carnival atmosphere. Um, and I'm going to give as much effort on that as I do on a, on a premium live event, uh, in terms of it's going to, it's going to be structured differently. I'm going to do different things. Right. Cause like if you're, if you're in an arena ready to watch a premium live event, you're looking for different things from pro wrestling than you are if you're some guy walking by and you happen to see a pro wrestling ring and you're like what's going on here right you need to present it differently that being said the effort for me is always going to be the same 
And that's probably detrimental. I should probably figure out a way to not go as hard when I don't need to. I I can't, right? And it's probably going to limit my career and that's okay. I've 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 accepted that. I accepted that a long time ago and I'm okay with that. Um but what I want to do now is I want to make sure that I put myself in positions where people can 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 see and uh enjoy what I feel like I can bring to the table at a high level of professional wrestling as much as possible. And I feel like MLW right now is really helping me do that. I feel like they've, they've, uh, they've encouraged me to be myself. I feel like they've encouraged me to be this, uh, this creative outlet and spark plug and to, 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 to present myself the way that I want to be presented and they want to put me on a platform that will present me in that way that I feel like best presents myself. And I feel like just as a, as a collaboration, it's, it's just a really powerful thing with a, with a really, really high ceiling and a, and a bright future. I'm really looking forward to it because it's, it's been a, a wonderful relationship so far. I love that, man. Well, Donovan, I got to tell you, first and foremost, thank you so much for doing this interview. Uh, Before we wrap things up, I do have one game that I want to play with you here. Uh, It's called The Goat. And (laughs) I don't know if you've seen it yet, but uh, basically I give you two wrestlers and uh, one total is 15. And until we, you pick whichever one you think is the goat until we get to the end. Yes. And it's up to your interpretation of what you consider the goat. I saw that. I hated it. I was like, (laughs) oh my God, what a horrible game. I hope I never have to to play. All I was right. Gonna say, do you right, want to pass let's, let's or do, do you want to do it? Do it. No, okay. I'll do it. I, All right. I, I can't back down from a challenge. <laughs> okay. Here I, we go. I, 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 oh, the idea of comparing Russ. Because the, here, I'll preface this. This is going to be so difficult for me because I'm like the king proponent of you can't compare wrestlers. Right. It's like it's like comparing a basketball uh, shooting guard to a basketball center. Yes, they're both basketball players, but they're completely different players. Like, like I, you can't compare Kobe Bryant to Shaquille O'Neal and say one's better than the other because it's completely different positions. But go ahead, I'll try. All right, well, let's do this. Here we go. We're going to start off with the classic iconic one, Shawn Michaels or Bret Hart. Shawn. Shawn or Stone Cold Steve Austin. <laughs> All right, can we limit this to just in-ring? Okay, I, gonna, whatever you want to, to just in ring. Okay, hard to compare everything else like promo versus promo, you know. But I, my brain just can't do it. So if it's just in ring, I uh, disclaimer: this is just in ring, Sean. All right, just in ring, Sean Michaels. Okay, uh, you know what? We're gonna start from the beginning Don't again. Have... Then okay, so just in ring, just in ring, Sean Michaels or Bret Hart, Sean, Sean Michaels or Stone Cold Steve Austin, Sean. Shawn Michaels or Ric Flair? Sean. Shawn Michaels or The Rock? Sean. Shawn Michaels or Kurt Angle? Sean. Shawn Michaels or Brian Danielson? Sean. Shawn Michaels or John Cena? Sean. Shawn Michaels or Triple H? Sean. Shawn Michaels or Brock Lesnar? This is so close, but Brock. Oh, okay. Brock Lesnar or The Undertaker? Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're hitting my Mount Rushmore of in ring <laughs> workers. Um, Brock. Brock Lesnar or Roman Reigns? Oh my God. That is so hard. Brock. Brock or Mick Foley? Brock. Brock or, or hold on. Brock or Randy Orton? You managed to list <laughs> probably the five best in ring workers of all time. Um, <sighs> Brock. All right. And Brock or Hulk Hogan? Brock. That's, yeah. All right. Well, there we go, guys. <laughs> Brock Lesnar is your winner. There you go, guys. All in right. ring. In, in ring. ring. In ring. In ring. ring. All right. I wonder how different it would have been if it would have just been all encompassing. Dramatically. Dramatically different. Like, <laughs> if you say all around or just promos or like, like then the rock skyrockets up, you know, Stone Cold skyrockets. But if it's just in ring, then it, it shifts in a whole different direction. I love it. Well, Donovan, thank you so much for being game to do this uh, game with me as well as the interview. Before we go, let the people know where they can support you and check out all of your stuff. Uh, right now, the the premium place to find me is on MLW. Um, but in terms of social media and stuff, it's all 
What did I change it to? Dijack FYE. FYE stands for Feast Your Eyes. So it's all it's all Dijack FYE. Um, I got everything on there that you need. If you need a cameo, if you need a, a pro wrestling tee, if you need anything, come find me at a show. Come talk to me at the table. I love to talk to people. I love to meet you. Perfect. I'm going to put all of the links in the description box below where you guys can support Donovan. Check out his stuff. Thank you so much for watching. As always, please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll catch you guys on the next one.